Hi everyone, it was really nice to meet you and I just wanted to re-emphasize the nutrition guidelines. We were not able to fully cover the RDAs or the recommended dietary allowance, so I wanted to quickly talk you through it and I'm going to try to do it in less than three minutes because I know you're really pressed for time. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to talk about these four different areas. We addressed the food labels last night as well as my plate. These are easy visual tools for us to help make better selections in regards to nutrition. And then the Dietary Guidelines for America, which is number two there, is those overarching themes based off of research and science that get updated every five years. This was the recommendation that less than 10% of our total calories should be coming from added sugars and solid fats or saturated fat. There's a couple other guidelines too, which is telling us that we want to eat a healthy meal pattern over the lifespan, and it encourages a vegetarian diet or a Mediterranean diet because of the overwhelming literature that supports the health benefits. The first number one here is what we did not have time to talk about last night, which is the dietary reference intakes. The dietary reference intake have been published since 1914 and basically were put together by a huge committee of scientists and they update it regularly but most of them are pretty sound and solid and have been around since uh, with a few minor changes based off of more research. The main goal of these dietary reference intakes is to essentially tell us how much of a particular nutrient we should have and then when does that too much become a harmful thing for our bodies? Because sometimes too much of a good thing can produce toxic side effects. The overarching goal of the dietary reference intakes is to help maintain good health, to help reduce chronic diseases, and then also avoid toxic levels of certain nutrients. Essentially what these DRIs are, it's a big huge category and it's gonna tell you how much you need of calcium or vitamin D or iron based off of your gender and then based off of your age. Another element to this is if someone's pregnant or if they're not pregnant, it will also influence their nutrient requirement. So this can become pretty tedious. However, we will be using the DRIs throughout this course because we wanna make sure that the menus that we're planning for these kiddos are going to be providing enough calcium or providing enough vitamin A for their age as well as their gender. The overarching themes of the dietary reference intakes are all these little acronyms right here. So I'm gonna actually skip to the next one to talk you through it. The RDA, so this RDA or the recommended dietary allowance is the one that we always try to shoot for. If you have taken a, a statistics class, you've seen this standardized bell curve. Essentially, what this blue dashed line is saying, that this RDA, or the recommended dietary allowance, is going to be sufficient for everyone who falls behind it. So that means it's appropriate for 97% of our population. In other words, that one gram of protein per kilogram should be sufficient for 97% of the population. Now sometimes there is not enough evidence to indeed show that X amount of a particular nutrient will provide enough health for 97% of the population. So what happens is we make an educated guess and that is your adequate intake or AI. Now this AI adequate intake is kind of this gray area here where again we're making an educated guess based off of scientific literature to say that well you know 8 milligrams of iron is going to be appropriate for an 8 year old and 97% of those 8 year olds is going to be sufficient. Those are the two that you're going to be using the most often in class. You'll find all of this in your appendix of your textbook. So if you're curious, why don't you take a moment to look up how old you are, what your gender is, and then go and see how much calcium you need for the day, how much iron do you need for the day, how much vitamin C do you need for the day. We'll be using the RDA and the adequate intake for all the nutrients when we look at different kids throughout the lifespan. So when we look at infants compared to teenagers, we're going to be analyzing menus to make sure that the menu meets the RDA or adequate intake AI um, for these menus. That's basically a really brief um, kind of overview of the dietary reference intakes and we'll continue to talk a little bit more about that but I wanted to keep this video nice and short.